Okay, yo. Hey, welcome Woo! to Confidently Insecure, the podcast where we're absolutely sure we don't know everything. I am your host, Zach Noel. Noel Tower. And I'm Kelsey Falalaladera. Oh, I loved that. <laughs> Hi, Zach. Hi, Kelsey. Yeah, how you doing? I don't know if we introduced ourselves last time. We didn't. I don't think we did the last three times. I Whoa. was depressed. Be- oh, that's fair. Yeah. And I was just me. Yeah, you're just casually being you as <laughs> always, as per usual. What's going on, sis? I'm good. We're recording this the day after my birthday. Yes. Um, I had a really nice day at my other job, the After Hours show on Sirius XM. Yes, you uh, did. Interviewed Beth Stelling, and I've interviewed Nikki Glazer. Nikki Glazer brought me my penis cake. Amazing. If you follow me online, you've seen this gorgeous, like, very detailed dick cake cock cake it's very detailed it's so wild it's a lot of interesting details too like the fingernails are really dirty okay i don't think that's intentional oh okay i (laughs) don't think anyone at the cake shop was like you know what makes people hungry fucking shit under people's (laughs) nails like literal poop Um, i thought it was very cute though Oh, it's so, I mean, I'm obsessed. Yeah, and we just had the first slice. And it was good. I I thank you for letting me be the first I, slice. I hope to leave a testicle with you. Oh, no, no, no. <sighs> Please. I don't eat sugar. Girl. I'm trying. You did it. You ate it so fast. I, I don't had know if a couple thought, bites. But they were like very fast. They were chaotic. They were like, yeah. I got to get it before someone takes it away. Exactly. And now I have, I'm working on my control, my mm. being in the now, my presence, my I happiness. You know how it and is. And how's it going? Great. Um, I feel better than I I've felt. You're like, ugh. I'm like, God, I don't want to fucking rock the boat, knock sure. on wood. But I'm, you know what, I, you know what it was? I was what? thinking about this on the way over here. Um, I forgot how fucking powerful music can be oh during emotional times sure like you sent me a really good song in the group chat you were like this is a really good breakup song and it's that that one song that's like uh don't think Ten, that I'm made about, about you. you nine you're toxic Ten, and they can't, can't trust you you still got mommy yeah. issues and the way i've been screaming in my car so much that spotify makes you know how they make you playlists yeah it made me one called angry breakup playlist stop like it's ai was like stop yeah this girl's going through something and it's fucking good is it just all of your rodrigo and the 10 things i hate about you song just over and over again fucking yeah and i'm like i'm glad to be angry because man sad is not fun but you know what comes with anger is a little bit of like um I, I'm now I'm mad at myself mm, mm. for allowing someone to think it was okay to treat me that way. And you could not have known no. from an outsider perspective. Yeah. You shouldn't be upset with yourself because you could not have known it was about to go down like that. You're right. But you know what I did know that you knew that I knew the whole time? Yeah. All the fucking red flags I ignored. Yeah. The giant waving yeah. massive red flags that I ignored. But the the flag pole was a beautiful dick. <sighs> well, the red flag was just flapping on that. In comparison. <laughs> to what's happening now look the 26 year old which we've decided that's what we're calling the, the professional 26 year old athlete, the 26 even year old. when he turns 40 we're gonna be like the 26 year old <laughs> he's been hanging around just like oh i know <laughs> i've been there i've yeah. been third wheeling no uh, he's been third wheeling us be very clear i don't know the third wheel is the one who leaves first and that's me no 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 the one who leaves first is the most sober always You've done this since I've known you. You come to parties five minutes before it starts and you leave about 45 minutes in. Interesting. You've you've been that way since I've known you and I like that about you. Sure. Because I'm like, yeah, he's in and he's out. I mean, I'm out. He's not here to fucking drag his feet. Yeah. Sup? Raise the vibe. And then leave while you're still having a good time. Yes. Mm -hmm. My co-star reminded me of that. nothing (laughs) worse than the person who stays when the party is over. Yeah, no. Oh my God, no. Or like the get, call your Uber. Leave. That's why I do like when I hook up going to their place Mm. because I control, they might control the environment. I control how long I stay in it. Yeah, I have not been over to the 26 year olds yet. And by the way, confidants, let me be very clear. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't rebound this fast. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, confidence, confident bottoms. Do whatever you want. Okay, fair. 
because I don't think I'm, I would be the first to say that you're doing something in what I would perceive to be an unhealthy way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel, unhealthy. it doesn't feel unhealthy. I don't know what's going on in your mind, but like N nothing, what the information yeah. I've been presented with, I don't feel is unhealthy. In fact, we actually had kind of a conversation being like, so what are was, your expectations? Yeah. And it was so fucking good. Like he was like, I have no idea where I'm going to be in like three months with this sport I play. And you, he's like, you are obviously coming out of, oh my God. He said the cool, because you know, athletes, they'd be reading those fucking mindset books. He said, just do it. He said, D be relentless. Um, he was like, you just hit a local bottom. And my mind went to like, what? He's using yeah. queer shaming me. But he, what he meant was like, you thought you f you thought you were having a rock bottom and it's true when i was going through it i thought that was the worst thing oh. i had ever felt <laughs> i know it was bad <laughs> <laughs> but then like 18 whatever days later i'm so clear about it yeah. and he was like that's just a local bottom wow. like you didn't you didn't unlearn everything right, you've spent the last right, 10 years right. training yourself to believe and know you and didn't lose your career oh my you didn't God. lose your leg you didn't lose your or like i didn't even just lose my power i didn't yeah. lose myself it was a temporary it was such a temporary the word local i don't understand though like it's a familiar bottom it's like oh Is okay it though? I would believe temporary bottom. Te okay, temporary is what they mean. Okay. But like t even like it wasn't as bad as I thought. Like there Aren't have things, been go on. things in my life where when I've come out of trauma, it's been bad for a long time. Sure. And very hard. And this was kind of like boop, in and out. A blip. Deep, bad, intense, then I'm out. Sure. But I will say like isn't everything what you feel it is? I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> because, okay, so I'm just, I think I'm just getting caught up in semantics. I'm glad that this was not a, yeah. a life altering bottom for you. Yes. And it, it doesn't have me questioning me as a person anymore, which sure. for like two weeks, I it was did. like, what's wrong with me? You were all up in your head. And no matter how much you were like, Kelsey, you're great. It's not no, you. Yeah. I was like, I can't hear you. You're speaking another language. And then we got to have, we got to finally shit your friends, got to finally shit talk, start <sighs> shit talking. Well, we were shit talking from the jump, but, but like I heard it finally. <laughs> yeah. And also we had stripped away the, the love yes. from the shit talk. Ah, oh, and it was fucking beautiful. Dude. Point being, the 26 year old was like, you are clearly coming out of this era. And he was like, I want to watch you become back to your like full volume, full fucking volume. And I was like, fuck yeah. But we're very clear that like, we know what this is. Okay. Intimate hangs often. What do you consider sex? What do you mean? They're intimate. No, no, I know. But I'm saying like, you guys are hanging out a lot. But yeah, but like, we don't act like, <laughs> well, it's one weekend. All right. Relax. <laughs> Um, I love that though. I, I'm teasing. I love that you guys had this like DTR conversation. It just felt like what you're talking about where it's like, I'm not seeing any like red flags yet that I'm totally like, no, totally. Yeah. Dude, dude, this is 26 year old is so different Yeah. than what's his face. Dude. He doesn't, he doesn't even seem to want attention no he's just there yeah and i'm like nervous to talk to him <laughs> dude it's like a quiet confidence yeah you're, and you're just like, like uh, what do i say and he's so tall he's so tall so he, like he man spreads just because he has to he, he's, or else he's like so hot yeah. yeah i wish he had body hair but oh there's some well i would hope so <laughs> um last night though i got to do a show and tell of my sex toy drawer. Ooh. Which has three layers to it. Small, medium, large. Did he express interest in the sex toys? Yes. He was like, I... We do this thing at the end of the day from a motivation journal sponsored by Coke Zero. <laughs> um, where we say, like, what did we learn today? What are three things you're grateful for? Like, I'm just trying to make this that a habit. What? In like your life? My mindfulness journal. Okay, got it. So I asked him. I was like, oh, what is something you learned today? And he was like, 
I learned that I'm very vanilla and I want to know more about like, show me your sex toy drawer. Like I'm interested in knowing all this crazy shit, like show me. And so I literally went through, it was probably like a 45 minute <laughs> show and tell of like explaining what this does and how does this stimulate for a man or a prostate or how this could be used for two women or like sure. vulva owners. It was so funny and I had never done that before. Did it transition into intimate? Touching yeah, and and doing using some stop. Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he has not played with his prostate. Mm-hmm. Okay, I was about to say no that way, but that was an night. assumption. <laughs> um. Okay, that's great. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, I'm happy. This weekend we've got Halloween parties. I mean, by the time this comes out, it'll be like this coming Halloween yeah. weekend. Do you know what you're being yet? No, and I don't oh. think I'm gonna know. I'm going to a. <laughs> A, a fucking L.A. party thing. What's that mean? It's like a big ass production. Okay. Invite only. Great. Event address gets released the night before. Cool. And it's Area 51 themed. So I think oh. I'm just going to get alien Aliens. nipple stickers. Great. Done. Call it a day. Done. And wear some glitter on my eyes. What a nerdy topic. Like what a nerdy theme. <laughs> yeah. It's I mean supernatural sure sure area 51 um do you want to do a dating no filter yeah of course that was basically our housekeeping but i didn't press the button oh i will say house housekeeping i have a dating update for me (gasps) oh my god what well calm down it hasn't happened yet okay it's very tinder based but i matched tinder yeah i'm on tinder what yeah always excuse me tinder and grinder but tinder is tinder never pans out i'm gonna need to see your tinder profile immediately right now i can't believe i didn't know you were on tinder what wait why do you need to see it because i want to see what it looks like how you present yourself in a non-grinder way okay like even my bumbles like i'm a slut you know what i mean oh sure i actually this is a great this is great for me too because i haven't looked at my profile in forever (laughs) um okay so it's it says you can look at it yeah okay i'll be the one to do oh i love this picture of you it's old at this point but the other pictures are pretty new. it still looks like you that's the point um so oh my I, god that's funny it says amc a lister with important like a to smirk. me honestly and the thing i'm about to tell you that came into play <gasps> yeah because his opening line was so can i be in your entourage oh which is like amc a list talk oh. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, absolutely. But I need your phone number for that. And he's like, oh my God, that's fast. I know. And he's like, oh, haha. I always have kidding. But if you're serious and then like the smirky face. So we went to text immediately, but he didn't send the entourage. And then, so I saw that he was partnered or married or something. Uh And then I matched with his husband too. Oh my God. This is my dream. So then on Tinder, you matched with his husband. Yeah. What are the odds? Yeah. And then, um, so me and him are texting. We've, uh, the three of us have tickets to see Five Nights at Freddy's. Shut the the animatronic movie. Up. Yeah. So. When is this happening? Um, a week from this Sunday. Oh my God. You should go. 445. <laughs> I'm, it's spy. I would just go watch that. Yeah. No, I know. It, yeah. It's going to be like a fun slasher. No, no, no. I mean, you on a oh, date oh. with a married <laughs> couple. You know what's so funny is he's. The first guy's tall and skinny, and the boyfriend I think is maybe shorter than me. Mm. So I feel like I'm going to be like right in between. Oh my god, which like could be very cute. A perfect Russian doll situation. Yes. He goes inside you. He goes inside you yes. for eternity. Um, I also like on your profile it says open minded in general, but prefer people who focus on the good. <laughs> AKA, I don't want any fucking East Coast asshole. I don't. My bad attitude fuck i think i've told you this before i've said this before like i on a dating app and this is probably my biggest piece of advice to anyone who's struggling with their dating app do not list things you don't like yeah don't list things you hate fact can't stand don't bother if it's oh my such, god you're so right it's such a weird foot to get off on Ooh. <laughs> wait what's the phrase <laughs> What, no, I like you know it. I just got like horny when you said that. I'm <laughs> ovulating. Sorry. It's just it's getting off on the wrong foot. There, there it, is. it is. Um 
But yeah, tell me what you do like. Tell me what makes you smile, what brings you joy. Like nothing better than Taco Bell and a new season of The Boys. Oh. Great. I actually, I dig that a lot. And that's actually one of the lines I use instead of when someone's like, hey, what's up? Or like, how's your day? I always go, what's been making you happy recently? I love that. And then that gives them the chance to kind of like show off their personality a little bit. Yes. Well, matching with you is a good start. Ah, Right? You didn't even mean for that to be a compliment. No, I did. Oh, thanks. Um, I love your level of pictures are like fun, goofy, silly, fun, silly, hot, sexy. It's good. This is a good profile. Another thing is uh, with now it's just like dating advice. No two pictures from the same event. If Mm. I see you at your sister's wedding. Twice. You're out. You're out. Well, it's not that you're out. It's that like, dude, I get it. You were hot that night. Yeah. There's a professional photographer. Good for you. You were in a suit. (laughs) But moving on. <laughs> Truly, if those are the only nice pictures you have on yourself, you're ugly. Uh, yeah, ugly. Uh, Even I, if you're hot. Okay, but I will say this. We are very skewed. Well, yeah. We get pictures of us, us taken all, all the time. <laughs> Whether it's our own choice yes. or we are forced to do yes. it. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, but that, and I think it's good to see people in like, maybe in a, on a hike. <laughs> maybe you're... Why did your height just change from 5.875 to 5.9? I didn't do that. It just changed in you my hand. You changed my app? I did not. No, I think this is the, the official one, and then I wrote in it. Oh, 5.8. that's funny. I'm oh, that's funny. Five, eight, and three quarters. And Congrats. I think it's very important to be honest about that. Yeah, here's the thing. I'm, um, I'm not tallest or shortest. But I do think I care about height, and I don't know why. People who claim they don't, this is another thing. Don't do not do a little virtue signaling. 6'1", if that matters. Bitch, Fuck. you care. You care enough to bring it up. Yeah, you're the one who put it there. Or I'll ask a guy like on a dating app because his height's not. So I was like, so how tall are you? And he goes like, oh, does that matter? I'm like, yeah, ah! it does. Wait, you just straight up ask how tall they yes. are? Yes. And they always respond? It, the they should wow if they don't i take it as a big red flag do you know what's insane that i'm I like just do you think realized? i'm not gonna find out your height <laughs> this is why this is why it frustrates me i don't like to waste time yeah so if i have to tiptoe and dance around something that i'm gonna find out the first fucking second i see you in person what are we doing but see that's inherently where it's bad right because we go because if you're not tall you're not attractive and i don't want to fuck you no no no. but let me be the judge of that if uh, he's muscular i dig i dig a five four muscular dude you're right but if if, if you're being weird mm. then then i'm like okay you're insecure mm. tell me mm. maybe i love short guys you're so right like give me the chance to be yes. the decider facts okay i dig that Anyway, I need to start asking, you, you know what? I just realized that's insane that what? you just self confronted me with <laughs> self confronting. Yep. <laughs> I don't swipe right on anyone that doesn't put their height. I didn't yeah, realize I subconsciously you don't want to waste time. That's the couple. Oh, they my cute? God. They're, they're like grungy, so, like Portland. Grungy, like, yeah. East Side Boys. Oh, yeah. I like this. I feel Ooh. like the tall, skinny one's going to have a big old dang Yeah. I like that a lot for you. Anyway. They're both very handsome. Yeah, and we're going to go see a movie together. How lovely. I think it's going to be very, like, chill, low stakes fun. Yeah. Aw. <sighs> okay. Um, I preferred that update to our dating a filter, but should we do one? Yes. Okay. Um, at Lucy Shigawa. Shigawa. Says they are in a relationship with a great girl but somehow finds themselves crushing hard on a friend at the same time. Okay. So they've got a situation ship. They think that person's great, but they find themselves crushing on a friend. I mean, this is, I I have trouble answering this because I'm so open and so single and so adventure. Yeah. It's like, I like to Mm -hmm. play around. Um, This will happen until the day you die. Oh, if you stay with, your partner even or you change partners more than likely you're going to encounter someone that piques your interest Mm -hmm. and that makes you go oh i really like this thing about this person or oh i wish my partner had this quality Mm -hmm. you just have to really step back and be like do i want to risk what i have Mm -hmm. if we're not open Mm -hmm. and like go for this other person or do i want to just like 
acknowledge mm -hmm. that this is something that I like that this person has revealed in me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What I'm getting just from the way they wrote it in was they have a situation ship, which either means like they're not ready to commit or the other person's not oh, ready they to commit. They're in a great relationship with a great girl. They're in a situation ship oh, and the girl okay. is great, okay. which makes me be like, are they? Because to be like, I'm in a situation ship with someone who's great. Like that's giving like, it's fine. Yeah. Energy. Yeah. And then to say, but I'm crushing hard in all capitals on a friend. I'm hearing fear about hard crushing on a friend not the situation ship thing not this i almost hear it as like this friendship is making me less excited about the situation ship because and here's what i'm going to say about this and maybe i'm wrong go on girl i'm always the one that says you got to fuck a friend to make sure that they're just supposed to be your friend okay but to the opposite of that i have also seen friendships completely obliterated because of fucking because of fucking and because they try to do a relationship and i've seen people stay in unhealthy relationships way fucking longer than they should have because the person was their friend first and Ooh. they don't want to lose them as a friend Ooh. where it's like you guys aren't even acting like lovers you're acting like friends like who are fighting sure so i i say that with oh oh my god the cat photo fell is it the no cat? oh it's us me. us <laughs> although now that you're speaking i don't have to see the cat photo oh she also fell whoa i don't know when she fell down oh i love um, that picture um anyway all of that to say i think it depends how long have you known this person is this a new friend did you just develop a crush on them why did you just develop a yeah. crush on them why haven't you always liked them since you've been friends with them and all caps hard huh and if it's a new friend because it seems like they find themselves crushing on a friend hard i'm worried that it's just new energy in your life yeah and you're like maybe you're excited i would say if you have not known this friend more than six months mm -hmm. fucking fuck them no well just <laughs> ch chill yeah. kind of but like uh see how you feel after six months i think Ooh, of the, knowing someone yeah the book i'm reading right now talks about like people that are like love chasers who just jump into relationship after relationship they don't it's it's like you're not, you're not even giving them enough time to show you who they really are i've heard the exact same thing you're for the first six or so months your secretaries are talking to each other <gasps> oh they haven't you haven't met the boss and they haven't met your the boss on your side either i love that i know damn he's like oh ba, 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 ba. but oh, you know what ba, 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 also ba, ba, ba. i feel like i'm not i'm the boss and this like i feel like i'm so just myself the whole fucking time you think that but there's you're layers right. to it you're right where you start stop giving them the benefit of the doubt because you've seen mm. that they maybe don't deserve the benefit of the doubt do you know what i mean damn that just makes putting it into perspective about like really slowing it down with people in the beginning I think, I mean, God, I shouldn't even be, I shouldn't be talking. Why? Because I, I, I don't. You have a podcast. You're supposed to talk. I know. <laughs> but about this, I'm out of my depth. Why? Because like, I, we're talking about relationships and all I really have to offer are mainly short-term relationships. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm just like, yeah, if you like, if you and a friend have feelings for each other, talk about it. Yeah fucking send a send a dirty text and see what happens like there is something fun about being friends with someone for a long time that you wonder could we like there's one or two people I in my life one, yeah so i'll name them but they the, i have a friend where people always say like why don't you get with so-and-so and i'm like oh no they're like my brother and i'm always like would we <laughs> No, I definitely agree with that. There's a friend, a mutual friend we have that I used to have such a crush on. Yeah. And now, years down the road, I do not. Fuck. With. I don't even want to see like their genitalia on accident. Oh. I'm just like I don't. So you feel that way? It. Yeah. Okay. So, dear listener, perhaps give it six months at least. If you're past six months, fucking go. What are you doing? Go for it. I'd say give them. Poke them on Facebook and see what happens. <laughs> but write back in and tell us what happens. Also, six months is such an arbitrary amount of time. I, I kind of hate myself for saying that. But I like it. But you know, don't don't do anything rash. Don't get a tattoo of them. Yeah, don't don't get BFF necklaces. Yes. All right. Um, when we come back, we're going to talk about today's subject, which is the QAnon wellness pipeline. Wow.
Oh. Ooh, I didn't even mean to do that, but that was a good one. Did a you do it twice? I did the. I act, I pressed the wrong one the first time. Oh. Anyway, God, you're good, Zachary. Kelsey, did you know there is a large crossing over between people that are in the wellness influencing space and people from QAnon? I didn't, although I speculated that the vaccine was probably a divisive moment mm. because my dad, who is a chiropractor, I remember when we were growing up, he didn't like vaccines because ah. he didn't like the concept of introducing a thing to your body yeah. that you didn't need to be introduced to interesting which made sense at the time now that i know research for my uh, know for myself i'm like no vaccines are there yeah. it's science it's like wow. anyway so i um, get it kind of shout out to marley list who gave me this idea because we were coming back from the retreat and she was like oh you know i've been to some retreats where like you're really excited to be there and then a teacher says something where you're just like Oh no! There's some science that would yeah. disagree with you. Like one of my favorite YouTube yoga instructors, who I watched religiously every day during the pandemic, that got me into yoga, that got me into this mentality space. After like two years of watching her every single fucking day, she dropped an anti-vax post, and I was like, no! "No!" And it was so upsetting. And I was like, "Fuck! Can I separate the art from the artist?" Could you? Uh, yeah, no, I still watch her every day. Oh, you so, do? Yeah, I did. I was able to. Um, but yes. How okay. strong was the anti-vax post? Pretty. Like, I think they made a podcast afterwards about it in like proving disinformation on wellness. And I was like, oh, you're the problem. Yikes. And you're supporting her. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, okay. So the merger of conspiracy theory culture and wellness con communities is sometimes referred to as, and this is like a new fun word that I really liked, conspirituality. Wow. Yeah. Which blends spiritual or wellness beliefs with conspiracy <laughs> oriented thinking. Uh, this phenomenon has been observed and reported on in various media outlets and academic studies. And there is a strong correlation between the embrace of wellness woo and being susceptible to misinformation. So for example, right? Like it's a place where you might typically see like a vegan influencer imploring their followers to stick to a water fast rather than getting vaccinated or a meditation instructor reminding her clients of the dangers of 5g or read oh, an Instagram God. comment explaining that vaccines are hiding tracking devices, blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's a place in it where the word scandemic might comfortably run up the side of uh, your ears. Um, and there's actually a lot. You're so right about why this popped off even more recently. Yeah. Because of. I've heard another thing, too. Yes. Real quick. The instead of wealth gap, the health gap. <gasps> whoa where it costs more and more money to maintain good health oh yeah and there's this whole you know disparity of people who can't afford it sorry go on no that actually plays so much into it because i was looking up well, what's like the science behind this right and there's a couple there's a couple things right so how does someone get into this is interesting because it's a sense of control over something that a lot of people feel like they don't have control over so the world is so shit and bad things are happening every day so here's a reality that i can make up and believe to feel like i have some sense of control over it mm. and uh there is a lot of connection between wellness communities and conspiracy theorists uh one being a belief in the idea of hidden truths or secret knowledge that only select few people are privy to so it's like that the, just wouldn't work in this culture it's like the idea of wanting to be special like sure. having this thing knowing this thing other people don't know yeah um another big overlap is the questioning of authority so it's a distrust of institutions at its core which is fair our government is not like the most trustworthy source and like this shit was happening at the same time as the pandemic with all like the racial disparity and the police violence yep. and like the new the trump election like all of this is kind of happening at a at a rate that it was boom and busting at the same time my whole thing though the pandemic was a great example though for me of why science is so important the whole world mm -hmm. wanted the vaccine yeah the whole world there's no way every nation was conspiring against its people right and so if anyone had been up to something fishy 
one of the other countries would have called them on it. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and the the sharing of information in the yeah. science community felt really like murky in that time too, where sure. people were like, because it's all about power too. At the end of the day, like not everyone's governments wants Americans to be healthy and of happy. Of course, um, America's I, government doesn't even want us to be healthy and happy. Say it again, sister. Um, there is also, uh, as you said, the pandemic had provided a ton of ground for conspiracy theory uh, oh, related yeah. wellness. So. Um, a lot of them became intertwined with QAnon narratives. Um, there is also a strong emphasis on personal autonomy in both wellness communities and QAnon. And like we said, kind of the skepticism towards authority or politics or medical oh, professionals. Oh, like what's pushed on everyone is probably not good for yeah, anyone. Exactly. Um, and then I thought this was an interesting thing is that people are starting to trust their influencers more than their own like education oh god so because in influencer culture we see inside their home their diets the products they're buying we feel like they're our friend yeah and we're like well i can go right here and get the answers versus like calling my doctor trying to schedule wow. an appointment spending 150 bucks on my copay like whoa and i'm like that's danger station yikes, yikes indeed um so then again like it's this distrust of an entire community. So you, uh, oh, th let me rephrase this. Um, if you're a part of, the, <laughs> just, you guys, Hippo is joining us in the office today. And now I'm remembering why I don't. Usually. Oh my God. Hippo, you got to get out of there. Thank you. You're a big dog. Did he drop a toy? Maybe. Hippo, hippo, drop a toy. Hippo, he's hippo. Trying, he's trying to get my rubber duck, and I'm not. Gonna oh, lie. well, that's what the that's what the thing is. Um. Okay, I thought this was interesting. So what's happening? And this is even like a little bit of fault of like the liberals too, is that once you believe you are in one part of community, you are automatically another. So if you're a Trump supporter, you're KKK. If you believe, a oh, we big, lump things together yeah if you believe if you believe big pharma is evil then you believe that you're anti-vax and that supplements will help you um if you think you can naturally boost your own immune system then you don't need to be vaccinated like it's kind of this thinking of grouping people and people grouping themselves yeah like okay well i don't believe this thing so let me find more people who believe this i do that when i hear someone's a trump supporter i'm like okay they are probably dumb uneducated they don't like queer people yeah they don't believe in dinosaurs <laughs> earth is flat yeah um i thought this was funny too uh however the biggest overlapper between these two communities mental illness <laughs> <laughs> so uh in february the national consortium for the study of terrorism and responses to terrorism say that five times fast oh no uh reported that over two-thirds of the QAnon followers who'd been charged in the january insurrection were also experiencing severe mental health conditions don't you think that was just their lawyers potentially but also I, I, oh i agree they're mentally ill yeah but i think a good lawyer would be like they're yeah but this is like an institution that does their own research right it's not like yeah, but I would the just see they got the, the court records that said, like, my client was under extreme mm. duress. I don't know. I, I don't know enough about that specific incident. Cause sure. I think if you claim mental insanity, like, you're going away still. Well, maybe not insanity, but, like, they're mm. having a bad day. Um, you, But you know what's scarier than uh, a mentally ill conspiratorialist? Two. <laughs> yes. Um... Uh, figures of authority becoming a conspiritualitist. Ugh. So here are a couple examples of some important people that went a little little off the deep end. Every cult leader. Uh, yes, facts. So Dr. Christian Northrup, who once was celebrated for her contribution to women's health, experienced a perplexing transition from a respected physician to a promoter of baseless conspiracy theories. Northrop began disseminating dubious content regarding vaccines, 5G technology, and the COVID-19 pandemic, often aligning with often aligning with the pervasive and unfounded claims circulated within QAnon circles. Her fall from grace was punctuated by appearances on the Oprah Winfrey show and other mainstream platforms contrasted with her more recent engagement with darker corners of the internet 
where she propagated unsubstantiated fears about public health interventions. So she represents a very compelling story about how a respected medical professional can even become ensnared in the web uh. of conspiracy and misinformation. Uh. Uh, and it's a precautionary tale about the potential for degradation of public trust in healthcare also, okay. because there's nothing scarier than a doctor yeah. providing misinformation. Yeah. Um, another one that I thought was kind of funny uh, is a man named David Avocado Wolf. No, is avocado in quotes? Yes. Okay. But that's what he chose as his nickname. Well, uh, he is considered to be one of the most polarizing wellness industry figures. He has a vibrant personality on social media, but claims extreme health, extreme health claims like mushrooms are going to be the thing that saves the world. Hmm. Uh, he has a massive social media following. He often doles out uns unscientific health advice, conspiracy theories, including QAnon, unfounded theories. Uh, he, he started in the raw foods and superfoods business and then slowly began pushing dangerous and baseless claims about uh, QAnon and like the pizza gate and sure. children and blood bath drinkers. Uh -huh. So he went from like celery is good for acne to yeah. Hillary. Duff. Kids are getting so <laughs> Hillary Duff is selling children at a pizza place. Yeah. Let's go with Hillary Duff. <laughs> um, but it's just like it, there is a fine line. Even I have found myself like walking, following certain wellness people, like the medical medium. Have you heard of him? No. He, do you remember when I was doing that, like celery juice cleanse? Yes. You said it was, it was the only time your systemic acne went away. Systemic? Yeah. No, babes. What's Try the again. word? Try again. What? Cystic. Cystic. Systemic is problems that are 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 prevalent in our, our in government your face. system. <laughs> our systemic acne. Yeah. This is a systemic issue. Cystic. And that means cyclical? No, cystic means it's cyst related. Oh. Yeah. I thought you told me you got it every time you got your period. Yeah, that too. So don't try maybe to make that systemic. systemic? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Overemic? Mm -mm. A gimmick? Mm -mm. Uh finally, Kelly Brogan, a board certified psychiatrist. <laughs> Witch doctor. <laughs> <laughs> with a strong background in medicine, uh, had transitioned from her career rooted in conventional medicine. So she worked in big pharma, prescribing medication for people to uh, dramatically shifting and ultimately denouncing pharmaceutical interventions in favor of a more holistic and natural approach. However, it didn't just start there. Once she became anti-pharma, her misinformation spreading about conspiracy theories and the COVID-19 denial uh, showed just like this stark, drastic uh, disinformation age of someone again who went from being in the medical field of like helping people and thinking, you know what, this system just doesn't help anyone anymore. I'm going to go all the way to the other fucking side and believe that they so are helping people. So if we could find someone in the middle. Yeah. Strike some balance. I feel like those are social workers. Oh. They're like, I hate the system as much as you do but i'm gonna help you get through it but i'm gonna help you get through it yeah i don't know it's like when you're saying this big pharma stuff it's like yeah i'm sure like i'm grateful to big pharma because i'm on some big pharmaceuticals <laughs> but also like we do treat um symptoms more than we treat like uh illness like right. the the cause right That's so like in that way i'm like yeah like but then we have to go to the root of capitalism and no one wants to do that i don't have the time i'm making too much money <laughs> I thought it would be fun to play. I don't know if this is really a game, but I wrote down um, how to spot one of these conspiritualists. Okay. How to see if they have any of these things in their bios to stay far the fuck away. Okay. Where's the game part? There is none. Okay. I just thought they were funny. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, so if they might be a conspiritualist, if their bio in capital letters says, do your own research. <laughs> that is like my, that is the funniest thing that came <laughs> out of like the pandemic and stuff. It's like, baby. People literally We've all got the same Google. Like, what are you talking about? Are you going, are you putting your lab coat on? I feel like she puts that in her bio to be like, they won't. <laughs> Uh, they might be a conspiritualist if their profile says, save the children. 
Oh, yeah. No, I have no I have no inclination to save the children. Right? Like not not as your forefront personality no. trait. I'm not talking about kids on my profile. No, thanks. Period. Um, oh, this was a big one. Light bulb emoji. Uh, and if they say they're enlightened by the real truth. Ew. They know something Run. we don't. Don't even okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Ooh. No one who's enlightened talks about being enlightened. Ooh. They just live. Are you ever enlightened if you're constantly telling people about it? Yeah. No. Yeah, it just doesn't seem enlightened. Right. Fuck off. Fuck off. Um, it might be a conspiritualist if in their profile says waiting for my spaceship, but first yoga. <laughs> Ew. This is also I just realized this is like you might be a redneck if. Oh, okay. You might be a redneck yep. if. Um, you might be a conspiritualist if your profile bio says crystal collector, truth protector. Ew. Okay. I may not have grabbed that one because truth protect. I do value honesty. Ooh. So if I didn't take it to like a dark place, I'd be like, oh, okay. oh she like protects like her okay. truth. Yeah. So this one's a beige flag for us. I mean, I'm susceptible to okay. a lot. Yep. Um, oh, this one was my favorite. You might be a conspiritualist if... Your profile says, plant-based, truth-tasted. <laughs> Ew. So many, this is actually stirring up so much for me because, like, when I'm on Grindr, when I'm on Tinder, when I get their Instagram and I fucking read their bio, I can be turned off so fast. Dude, me and you are the fucking So same. fast. I'm like, really? There's nothing worse than a good bio and a shit ending line. Oh, you're Truly. like, oh, I could see myself uh, marrying this person. And don't be a fat bitch who doesn't work <laughs> out. What? what? Where the fuck did that come from, man? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my God. I don't actually, I don't dig any quotes up mm. there, especially if they're earnest. Mm. I'm like, but I'm silly, so I don't want to. You just made me wonder, what did the 26-year-old's profile say? Oh, my God. Please. On Tinder? Uh, or, I'm not going to say what app because I don't want to give them free promotion unless they Bumbala? pay us. Is that our aura ring? Yeah. Does it really work? Yes, I love it. Really? I have such stressful dreams all the time. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Not now. Okay. I'm just saying. You should get one because it'll help you monitor your... I wonder if I could wear it just at night. That's yeah, what I'm a lot curious. of people do. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, for anyone who cares, the 26-year-old's profile says... Uh, <laughs> six five yum yum green flag it could just say that honestly celiac <laughs> okay that's spicy to me like that gives him a little something and it's good because it's like i'm getting this out there yeah we're not gonna do a lot of we're like not food going to trucks pizza. Uh -uh. yeah uh it has his instagram handle which is good i feel like that's a green flag because it's like i've got nothing to hide Show, yeah uh, his age, because it's a mistake from what's on his profile. His profile say 17 or something? <laughs> oh, Jesus, Hibba, hello. What was that about? It's so weird he doesn't lick. I know. And then it also says where he's from, which is cool because it's not here. So yeah. you're like, ooh, Okay, but exotic. this has triggered me a little bit. Uh-oh. I don't need to know where you're from. And let, in his case, yes. Yeah, because I don't like. Right, you know, made in Iowa, perfected in New York. Ew, do or people say not that? perfected, but they say stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I don't. I would throw my phone across I the room. Do not care what state in the fucking United States you're from. Oh, like, period. No, if you're from the U.S., don't even tell me that. No, but I don't want to know. Let me assume you're Canadian for all I fucking know. True. Uh, we we should be optimists. We should. Um, I like in his profile. Uh, it says like you know a prompt quote. Like, I'm hoping you dot dot dot. Oh, okay. And I got nervous because I was like, uh oh. Didn't what's you just give say? away the app? No. All of Do them the have this. Oh, okay. <laughs> not Tinder. Oh, I don't use Tinder. Okay. It's definitely not Tinder. Okay. Um, it says, enjoy reading. Love to know what books other people are reading with a nerd face emer emergy. Emergy. And then I liked this one. My real life superpower is, and then his answer was that every single parent I've met loves me. Okay. Which is kind of like a, a cocky, like, flex. It is a flex. It's also jumping to, Commitment. you're going to want to introduce me to your parents. Which is, like, fun if you I don't then, think it's fun. You, you just get railed I, by the them. thing, too. <laughs> <laughs> if you call them daddy, yes. it kind of takes on a new... Oh, 
Do you this know what thing, he's like, been calling me? What, good girl? Yes. Good really? Girl. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I, if someone ever called me that before, I would smack them across the face. Really? I'd be like, shut the fuck up. Because you aren't one. No. I'm a bad girl. <laughs> wow. Good girl. Yeah. Don't you, you can't say it. Good girl. No. Good girl. You're ruining it. Good girl. Stop. Who's a good girl? I'm not a dog. Who's a good girl? Zach, can you believe we've come to the end of I our can. It wellness feels right. to QAnon pipeline episode? Oh. Um, you got anything to promote? Uh, come see me on tour. ZachNoeTowers.com for tickets. And yeah, oh, well, if you have Sirius XM, listen to After Hours with Zach Noe Towers. You might get to see your big old dick cake. Yeah. Um, oh, we're selling spots for the second retreat happening in March so 21st cool. through 25th. Uh, get it at dopanicretreat.com. And Zach, tell me. Uh, rate and review the pod. <laughs> rate and review the pod. Unless you're going to give it less than five stars. Then don't because we're, we're sensitive. sensitive. And we'll see you next week. Bye.